guys, and you're with Barry here on somethingfeelswrong.com and the Something Feels Wrong YouTube channel. Uh, I had the pleasure to meet uh, three three days ago now a couple of really cool people that come from the States that I really enjoyed spending a lot of time with them. Um, love how they think and I love their spiritual awareness on certain subjects, but I just wanted to introduce you to a couple of great folks and we keep uh, everybody's privacy intact so we're just going to want to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. T can't go wrong with that and um, I want you guys to listen to what their thoughts guys how long you been coming to the DR now uh, about 10 years about 10 years and tell us some of the places that you've been to because I'd like to hear some of the different areas and I know our viewers would too of some of the other cities and areas. Puerto Plata, mm -hmm. Sosoa, mm -hmm. Cabrete, uh, Wandolio, Punta Cana, uh, most recently along the northeast coast here, mm -hmm. uh, with DR Escapes. Uh, we haven't been to any of the major centers of the capital, Santiago, or mm -hmm. Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we really haven't had a desire, really. But I'm sure eventually we'll get there. There's no beach there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you guys have already, um, you're investors in some um, type of uh, all-inclusive. Uh, yeah, all-inclusive. Uh, for us, it was... Uh, step above just a timeshare because it was a, an opportunity to buy and lock in at a rate of accessibility uh, for basically a life term. Uh, and it was actually unlike a lot of just timeshares um, actually gave us a, a deeded, a piece of property that you know we could say was ours, so to speak. And unlimited. Yes. Oh, yeah, unlimited. There was no restrictions. Uh, okay. It's not and, like and, a week, you mm -hmm. know, in July. And, and, and it's going to cost us the same to use it today and it, as it will 25 years from now. So. Yeah, so this decision was strictly based on a investment strategy, or was it some sort of your way of beginning your plan B? Oh, definitely beginning our plan B. We looked at it to give us untethered access to property here whenever we wanted to come at mm -hmm. any time. So definitely was part of our plan B strategy. Uh, and then what we realized as we were coming back and forth, that was really too structured for us. Uh, okay. Limited uh, access to certain foods and you know, still had to eat at a certain time and eat a certain menu, even though it was variety, that's not really over, over the term was really going to work for us. But two, the environment wasn't the environment that we saw ourselves living in. It was you still a commercial I mean? environment. Yeah, very commercial. Know, and control. Yeah. You told me during our discussions that you really felt things changed back home um, around the 9-11 event. Would you elaborate a bit on that for me? Well... You know, um, again, you know, I, first of all, from a travel, air travel perspective, I, I'm an old Eastern Airline guy. So, I mean, I go back to air travel, you know, back to the 80s. It was just much more different after 9-11. Uh, I guess the feeling that permeates since 9-11 is truly fear, mm -hmm. um, uncertainty, instability. I mean, you can feel it when you travel with people. Uh, people who are seasoned travelers, who maybe travel business travels for a living, you know, they chew and swallow it. But you can tell people who travel for pleasure or vacation, you know, you can you can see the the, the, the tension and the discomfort uh, in the, in that experience. Are you both witnessing back home that's accelerating as time goes on? Well, every time you look on the news, there's another incident that has happened. Um, you know, most recently in Belgium, in the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we actually traveled uh, to the DR this last time, we saw a complete difference in the way 
security was handled. Yeah. They reconfigured the lines. Mm -hmm. They're much longer. Uh, there's a higher uh, security presence, uh, law enforcement presence in the atrium of the airport. Uh, definitely different. I mean, it changed that quickly. Uh, and, and again, it, uh, it's, you become more of a fear-based culture despite our best efforts to, to say that we're not. Do you feel everybody needs to have a plan B of some sort or another? Well, I, I think anyone is prudent about how they live their lives. Or, yeah, but you need to have a plan B for coming home from work <laughs> just to avoid traffic. So I, I certainly would advise and think a plan B is prudent and, and wise for sure. Do you find most people back in uh, North America are starting more to open up their eyes or sensing like our, our new channel something feels wrong? Do you think do you think more and more people are starting to feel that over the last couple of years? I, I think they feel it, but I don't think they it computes that I can do something different. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I think, it, yeah, you definitely feel it, but I think there's a very small percentage of people who feel that and then act on doing something different, putting their plan B, really putting that plan B into place. Mm -hmm. Do you feel out of all the places, um, I know we've answered this already, but we ran out of battery power, so we're doing it again. Uh, did the four days provide you of a different perspective of this country and the, I guess, the, uh, the, the variety of this country? Oh, without a doubt, from from not only uh, let's say entertainment options, but just to learn to have learned so much about this country agriculturally, the uh, accessibility to uh, raw resources, particularly food. Uh, a lot of people don't think, but if most people in urban centers would ask themselves if something went wrong, if, if the grid and the power went out, and there was no food in the grocery stores. Where would you get food from? Could you go to your nearest fruit tree and get something to eat just to survive? No, we're trying to come up with you know, uh, you know supply uh, supplies and you know a six month supply of water and and food in case something goes wrong. And you've got to create your own uh, rations, if you will. But that's not the case here. I mean, if you can walk walk to the fruit trees and these guys right here in front of us are bringing the coconuts down yeah hitting the ground <laughs> thunk, thunk, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i so, think we're safe though yeah. but what other countries did you guys also visit when you were contemplating because i know you've traveled a lot you do business in china uh and uh, i think a couple of other countries but yeah. Uh, what other countries did you consider did you actually well, even go to visit we spent time in jamaica mm -hmm. um, we spent time in the Bahamas. We spent time in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. we considered there, we have family in the Virgin Islands. Um, we also considered as uh, far as uh, South America. But you know, again, we still are taking you know a, a responsible approach in as much as we do have aged family members that you know we think ultimately are going to have some dependency on us, and we want to be available to them. And this is you know two and a half hour flight I mm -hmm. mean, and, and and I think that the infrastructure is even getting better from the, from the airport perspective where there are going to be more flights available to get back to the states and uh, that, that bodes well for us. Also um, from a woman's point of view what, what, what do you feel that you can maybe share with the ladies in the audience? Uh, it's been my experience after over 160 excursions with people and well over 400 people there's a lot of fear out there that's um, fear is always justified but it can also be over justified what, what have you learned in all your travels well first of all that you have to be uh, flexible and mm -hmm. I think that in the US we are not taught flexibility because everything comes so easy Everything is about convenience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think a lot of women probably would fear uh, moving from their home to uh, an island like the DR, the loss of convenience. 
And really, you get what you gain is freedom. Freedom of time, you gain freedom, peace of mind. Um, there is no rush, there is no hurry. Uh, it's just a very peaceful, loving. I found the people to be so warm and welcoming and hospitable. Um, I, I think that if you are open-minded mm -hmm. and if you are flexible and if you uh, understand that everything you need is provided and be okay with that, I mean, I, I don't see where the fear comes in. Well, for a lot of people, and, um, you know, a lot of people, it's crime, and there's crime in the DR like there is everywhere else in the world. Well, but I have a sister-in-law who lives in Chicago. Yeah. There's more crime in Chicago. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's crime where we come from. There is crime everywhere. The key is to be aware of your surroundings, mm -hmm. to not put yourself in a position to be uh, taken advantage of, not take advantage of people, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you take advantage of people, then you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are firm believers in, uh, you know, you get, you get what you give. Mm -hmm. And our energy, we work on our energy being open, loving, generous, caring energy. And that's what we expect to get back in return, in, in, no, no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. Uh, just in closing out, I, I want to ask if you could maybe make a suggestion or a point of interest to the, so many folks that I, I get um, oh, probably hundreds of emails a week. Uh, a lot of them know they have to do things. That a lot of them know they might need a plan B. Some might include relocating. Others might include not relocating. No, no, no. But... What kind of suggestion or words of advice from people that have traveled a lot would you recommend uh, to somebody else who's, who's kind of on the fence post? Well, hey, first of all, you have to be true to yourself. Uh, investigate, do research. Uh, trust your instincts. Uh, ask questions and most importantly go and see for yourself if you're not willing to make that investment in the process then you might as well don't even get on the fence and stay mm -hmm. on the other side no, <laughs> and, yeah, you know, good so, point, good point. Uh, and, and, and that's with anything I mean I, I mean I have a plan B I have alternate alternate routes to and from my house Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you would think that people would, you know, have some alternate plans, you know, to, uh, you know, for the, for the rest of their lives, the sustainability of their lives. Um, that's, that's what I would suggest. With all the places you've been, would you agree when I use in my post a lot the statement, the question you need to be asking yourselves is not, will I be affected, but rather to what degree will I be affected? Have you, have you learned, like, um, even after our little visit, and we didn't sugarcoat things, that um, certain things are more sustainable than others? Would you agree that question is, is, is very valid? Well, I think back to the point my wife made originally is the key to all of it is awareness. So we're all being affected all the time. It's a matter of how how aware we are to how to how we're being affected. Um, so again, it's not even a matter of when. The when is now. We're all being affected. I mean, think about it. if everyone in the country was affected by 9/11. If you if you travel by air, and in in other instances, I remember there was a time when it, when if you presented a hundred dollar bill for payment you were somebody. Now when you present a hundred dollar bill for payment, they inspect it to make sure it's not counterfeit. So you're automatically suspected. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, if you gave someone a hundred dollar bill, you were the man. Mm -hmm. It's not the case anymore. 
Anything you'd like to add That's on true. that? No, I absolutely agree. Um, I just agree. <laughs> well, guys, it's Barry and from somethingfeelswrong.com, and we're going to start doing a series. Well, I put my cell phone on hold. We're going to start doing a series uh, with the people that come to visit us and with the people that have relocated part-time or in the means in the process of relocating. And we hope you find this new series interesting. And uh, I do want to thank my new friends and guests, Mr. and Mrs. T. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, really Barry. Thank you for appreciate your time. You. We appreciate you very much. And we'll talk soon. This is Barry Moore. Yes. Yeah.